I want you to remember when you were really young and used to dream what your life would be like when you grew up, where you would live, what you would do, when you used to dream so big. Reflect on that moment. And now fast forward to today. Is your life similar than what you imagined? Is it different? Where there are unexpected turns that you could have never, ever imagined. I know for me, the happily ever after that I planned is not exactly how it turned out. And as a rabbi, I heard countless people come to me and say the very same things. So here's what they said. The first was that life had turned out so differently than they had imagined. There were the very tragic incidences. Someone had lost a child, had lost a parent at a young age, something that you never dream about when you're a child. And then there were the other incidences. It just turned out differently. I know when I dreamed of the house and the kids, I didn't dream of possibly getting a divorce, and people didn't dream of that either. And then there were a third category of people who would say to me, it turned out exactly like I thought it would, except it feels totally different than I imagined. And for some reason, those were in some ways the most sad because for those people, they couldn't even talk to their friends. People came to me and said, is God playing some joke on me? Is God laughing at me? I mean, this is not what I wanted in my life. And what I learned is that God could not possibly be laughing at us. How did I find this out? Well, I'm the mother of a six-year-old, a four-year-old, and a two-year-old. And one day, when I was saying prayers with my oldest, and he was about four years old, he turned to me, and I said, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mom, I know exactly what I want to be. And here, Jewish mom, waiting, I'm thinking, doctor, lawyer, and a big pause, pirate. My son wants to be a pirate. And I laughed. And in that moment, I realized that's how God is laughing with us. It wasn't a God laughing at me, mocking my life, or testing me, or punishing me, or doing anything like that. It was a God laughing with me, comforting me through sorrow loving me through the pain, and weeping, me, weeping as I wept. It's an interesting thing, because this notion of a God who cares deeply for us is not, the ta is not what I was taught as a child. It was the last thing I was taught. God was a man on high up there who cared very little for my life. And I took that into adulthood. I thought, how can God care for me? I mean, there are people starving in Darfur. People in Africa, God is far too busy for me. Little Sherry Hirsch. But who was I to say what God's Blackberry should look like? Then there was congregants, people that came to me and said that maybe God was punishing them. Maybe they deserved this pain because they had done something terrible in their youth, like they had stopped speaking to their parents. And the last one that threw me the most was that God was testing them, that this was some sort of existential test, and God was seeing if they could handle it. What I couldn't understand is when a mother stood before me and told me her child was dying of leukemia and that God was testing her, in my mind, I had to fire that God. Because any God that would test a mother like that doesn't deserve belief. And I started to think about a new way of believing in God. First, this was a God who needed us just as much as we needed him. How do I know? Six days of creation and then the very final seconds. What does God do? He creates people. Dysfunctional, imperfect complicated humanity because God was alone and God needed us just as much as we needed him. The second thing I learned is that each one of us is made in the divine image. 
And that phrase is thrown around left and right. We're made in the divine image of God. But there seemed to be something more. Is that each one of us is endowed with a divine spark. And with it, we can light up the world. And how do I know this? Moses says to God, show me who you are so I can go back to the Israelite people and sell you. And what does God say? I am compassionate. I am kind. I am loving. But we know much better, as does Moses. This is the God that turned Lot's wife into a pillar of salt. This is the God who argued with Abraham about Sodom and Gomorrah. This is the God who is vindictive and spiteful and angry. Yet God describes himself utterly different. What God describes is the God that he's going to become extraordinary. So that's what God wants from us, is to be extraordinary. And not extraordinary in the way of famous or powerful or affluence. God wants us to be extraordinary in our regular selves. I want to tell you a quick story. When I was growing up, I was a latchkey kid because both my parents worked. And I used to stop at this woman's house named Shirley Kolodny. And a group of us, who all had parents that work, would stop there for these fabulous cookies called rugelach, a Jewish dish. And every day after school, she was our home. She was our serenity. She was our peace. So 20 years later, we're all at a wedding, and I didn't think that much of it. And everybody has gone on to do wonderful things with many degrees behind their names and articles published. And what are we all doing? We're talking about Shirley and the imprint she made in our lives. Here's the irony. She thought she was so regular. When we were younger, she would talk about all the mothers and how extraordinary they are and how she's just a housewife. But she was anything but. To her, she was regular. To us, she was extraordinary. That's what God wants from us. God wants us to embrace who we truly are and bring it to the world. And then we will give all those around us tremendous meaning and we will find it ourselves. I think a lot about this and what I'm supposed to do in the world. And there's a great story in that we're not supposed to be searching for happiness, even though it's the buzzword of today. Be happy, be happy. We're supposed to be searching for meaning because that's everlasting. In the end of days, there's a great story in the Jewish tradition that we'll meet God at the pearly gates. And walking up there, God will have one question for us. Were you the best Sherry Hirsch you could possibly be? God will not ask me, was I Moses, Mother Teresa, or even my mother? God will want to know if I was me. Extraordinary divine, authentic, regular me. Then, in those moments, I can say, God willing, yes, and God and I will have a good laugh together. <laughs>